there everyone it's jen the board game librarian so today we're gonna start off with um a woman is no man by itaf rum <laughs> So a Woman is a No Man was written in 2019 and was quite the splash hit. I somehow missed some of the hullabaloo that came out about this book. And uh, Itaf Ram is a Palestinian American woman who's roughly my age. She's in her early 30s and she wrote this book. So it's told from the perspective of three different women, um, all different generations. And been a little while since I've read it so I want to make sure I have everyone's names correctly too. We have Dea, we have Ezra, and we have Farida. So three different women. Farida is the matriarch of sorts, uh, Ezra is the mother, and Dea is the daughter. So three different time periods sometimes too. A woman is no man. It very basically follows Ezra who is um, married in Palestine in the late 18, 1980s, early 1990s and comes to America. Her world over there is very narrow. She lives with her mother and father and some siblings and it's a very traditional Palestinian Muslim household. And her father is very, very abusive and her mother is verbally abusive as well. So we have a lot of things going on here and I'm going to try to be as sensitive as possible as well too. Um, so Ezra ends up marrying her husband that she's met a couple of times and he ends up taking her over to New York and living with his family of which his mother is Barita. And Ezra has read books a lot of her life and kind of snuck them in when she wasn't supposed to be reading them and she has a somewhat romanticized view of what her marriage is going to be like. It's not going to be like her parents where her father hits her mother and her mother verbally assaults um, her as well. That Things are going to be very different. She reads books like A Thousand and One Arabian Nights and things like that where there's a very romanticized um, version of what love is. So we have the story that follows Ezra here to America, to New York City, and we see her try to acclimate to American culture, American life, in a very narrow and defined way as well. Ezra is kept mostly in the house where her main job is to be married to Autumn and provide heirs, male heirs. And um, we, as the book goes along, Ezra ends up having four daughters, which is not great in that household. Um, we also have Dea's story, and Dea is, takes place in 2008, and we know already at some point that Dea's mother, Ezra, and her father, Adam, are dead. They were killed in a car accident. So as uh, Dea and her three sisters live with Farida, her grandmother and their grandfather in New York. And Dea is a high school senior. She is thinking about going to college. She'd really love to go to college. She's quite bright. But her grandmother is forcing her to pick a suitor for an arranged marriage. So in several scenes, we have Dea is having sit downs with potential suitors and what kind of the, how that process works. And we also have some scenes with Farida and what her life was like before she had come to America with her husband, the um, refugee camps that she had lived in, the quality of the refugee camps, and what living conditions were like then, and what her marriage had been like with her husband, and how Farida essentially puts a stop and ends the cycle of violence on that end. This is a really, really hard book to read. The biggest problem that my mind had to wrap around was that this is contemporary stuff, somewhat contemporary stuff. So Day is basically four years younger than me and she's being forced into an arranged marriage here in America and that the level of abuse that is going on in all three of these women's lives 
is happening now is happening all over the world. I, I talk very openly about the fact that I grew up in an abusive household and how it affects your life and how it affects your children's lives and how it affects the wife and mother. And we see this most particularly with Ezra because Ezra attempts to leave with the four girls and is stopped. But Ezra knows her English is fine, but it's not um, as well developed as Dea's is because Dea ends up growing up knowing English. Um, she doesn't work. She has no bank account. She has no resources, nowhere to go. So we have a very confined situation for Ezra and where she can even go. And we have in it a very traditional Palestinian American and Palestinian culture here where men are very dominant in this society and in this culture. Um, but the wives and the women and the mothers are just as domineering but in different ways. So I'll add in too, Ataf Ram is Palestinian American and she is writing from some of her personal experience too. I had read articles in preparation of doing this for a book club um, and she received a lot of angry letters, emails, messages from folks in the Palestinian American community. And the messages that she received were basically, why are you airing our dirty laundry? That's not stuff that we talk about. It's not stuff that we put out there for folks to know. You know, family matters are very private and personal. We don't talk about that. And we don't talk about mental health issues either. Um, so she was shunned in some ways from her community. And at the time when she had been writing this, she was somewhat recently divorced or already divorced from her own somewhat arranged marriage to a Palestinian American man. And, you know, Itaf Ram goes through a very similar journey to what Dea does, where Dea is a high school senior. She's forced um, to pick a suitor for their marriage after two meetings. And um, part of the bargain that Dea wants to make and that Itaf makes um, in her own life is can I go to college? Um, because in this particular circumstance and in very traditional conservative households, you know, a woman is not educated. She is not meant to know a lot of the outside world in terms of perhaps bettering herself escaping from this cycle of violence in terms of breaking a very traditional mold that's highly frowned upon. Um, so, you know, it's Ram gets married, she has two children, and I think for her, writing this book really was cathartic in terms of talking about her experience, which is it seems very suffocating. And if you know someone or have experienced any level of, abu of abuse in your personal life, you know how suffocating that can be. Um, to know sometimes that you don't have options, that this is how it's going to be, and that you can't escape. So I, I connected with this book on a very personal level too, having the history of abuse running through my personal life um, and um, even being so close in age to Dea where and she did not go to a public school she went to a um like a private Muslim education school you know that even as a young woman I, I had so many more liberties and freedoms than she had. She couldn't, she had to come home right after school. She was not allowed to hang out with boys. She could not dress a certain way. Uh, again, very, very, very conservative. Um, and for me, it's always hard when something is, when there's so many, I don't know, I'm trying to think of the right word for this. So many, restrictions for women and none for men. <laughs> I have a very 
personal and deep problem with that. And I so I really wanted Dana to be able to spread her wings, to come into her own, to have the life that she had envisioned for herself too. She is living in America. You know, we pride ourselves here in America on living the American dream, on individuality, on personal freedom and liberty. And none of these characters are really living that. And that's so tough. Um, and Farida had makes this comment too about, you know, coming to America and not becoming Americans the, in terms of keeping culture. And I, I work with a, a lot of immigrants, refugees, um, in my personal life at work. And, you know, some folks I know are very concerned about their children becoming American, that they don't want their children to be foreign or immigrants, um, that they want them to know the language and to assimilate that way because if for whatever reason they had had persecution or something along those lines. And other folks too, it it's like the flip side of the coin, you know. Um, here in Connecticut we have, um, you know, one city in particular, New Britain, where, you know, a lot of Polish folks ended up living and settling in that area and it's like this all all across America all across America um where groups of immigrants come over and they end up settling where other folks from their homeland end up um some assimilate into American culture and some don't and that's just kind of the way it is of sorts um the statement so the title a woman is no man is said by Farida which is very interesting and so much is there. Right? So this is a very, I give this book four stars out of five. I was, like, I listened to it, and, um, which was great because it was a full cast narration. So there were different voices for Farida, Ezra, and Dea. And also helped with the pronunciation of names and um, words that I wasn't familiar with. Excuse me, and I'm always thankful for that um, because then it helps me be more accurate when I'm talking to people and learning too. It's a learning experience for me. Um, I, I think this is a book that is really going to hit home for a lot of people, even if you're not Palestinian American. I think the themes in here about what it means to be a woman, what womanhood means, where our place is in society too, about traditional female roles versus non-traditional female roles and how you navigate that in your personal life too. So I'd highly recommend A Woman Is No Man by Yatal Frum. That is all for my review this week, friends. We'll see you next time.